If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go. Mind Pump. Mind Pump. With your hosts, Sal Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. In this special throwback type episode. Oh, God. Yeah. Hang in there if you're new. I promise it's uh, not always like this. Mind Pump. So oh, for the yes. first 44 minutes, God, we went off. In this intro, it was a little uh, no holds barred, a little, little crazy time, hilarity. Uh, so we start out innocent enough, talking about style as you age. So as you get older, how does your style change? That's and right, Adam's at, hitting that threshold. At, it, pretty soon, he's going to have to start dressing his age. Otherwise, yeah. he just looks like the creepy guy trying to look cool. <laughs> <laughs> then we talked about Health IQ. Now they offer Health IQ is a company that offers life insurance to fit and healthy people. So you get special rates. But they have a new product for people who have type 2 diabetes who also take care of their health and fitness. So it's really, really cool. If you go to healthiq.com forward slash mind pump, if you scroll to the bottom for a quiz, you will get a free quote and they'll give you a fitness quiz. It's really cool. Uh, we all, I think we all scored pretty damn good. Let's see if you could beat yeah, our I score. I did good. Adam was lying. I think I got like 92 <laughs> or something like that. Yeah. Then Adam talks about how he uses Organifi's gold pumpkin spice. That's with an N. It's uh, pumpkin. Everybody. Pumpkin spice juice. You mix this Special with special edition almond milk. It's delicious. It makes you relax. It's good for nighttime. Mm. And then he mixes it with uh, his full spectrum hemp oil extract, full of cannabinoids that make you relax and improve your sleep. It's a magical elixir. It's a pretty good combination. Now, Organifi is the maker of the pumpkin spice gold juice. If you go to Organifi.com forward slash mind pump and use the code mind pump, you'll get twenty percent off. And our favorite type of hemp oil is from Ned. So if you go to Hello Ned, that's Hello H- Ned. H-E-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump, you'll get 15% off your first pr- purchase. Then we talk about nicotine and its nootropic benefits. Woo. That's right. Can I'm make feeling you- it. That's right. Then we talk about the gangster Christmas gift hack <laughs> to keep kids in line. So yeah, little, you guys are assholes. You're little, welcome. Little yeah. trick that- uh, I don't know if I could do it. That uh, we might do to keep our kids- acting good this holiday season. Yeah. Uh, then I bring up an article about how the Kansas City Health Department, I think it was, bleached food that was intended for the homeless because, you know, they didn't get a permit. So whack. Yeah. So yeah, screw you, homeless Way to people. Go. We're trying to save you by bleaching the food. Mm. And then we talk about the negative effects of porn, and that's where we go off the rails. Yeah, it gets a little sideways. Please bear with us. Uh, we do get into fitness after that part of this episode. And then we get into the questions. Here's where we talk about fitness. First question was, should my squat and deadlift be around the same weight? And why can I deadlift so much more than I can squat? That's common, actually. Most people can deadlift more than they can squat. But some weirdos out there, like Justin, Outliers. can squat more than they could deadlift. Find out why. The next episode, uh, excuse me, next question, do we have any advice for women before they get pregnant to make sure the pregnancy is a healthy one and their body can bounce back quickly? So what should you do in your workouts? What should you focus on to make sure your pregnancy goes as easy as possible? The next question, this person's an athlete, has had multiple injuries. Gosh, they've had their adductor pulled, Achilles, soleus. They're also Golly super G. super flexible, and they think it's their hyperflexibility that may be contributing to their injuries. What recommendations do we have for them so that they don't hurt themselves anymore? We do mention one of our programs that's correctional called Prime Pro. This is a correctional program. You can actually check it out at mapsfitnessproducts.com. And the final question, how do we feel about people doing Olympic weightlifting for aesthetics? Is that a great way to just to change the way you look? So you want to sculpt your body, you want to change the way you look? Should you go just practice Olympic lifts? Dumb or, idea. Or is that a bad idea like Justin just said? Yes. Also, let me remind everybody, Maps Anywhere has been redone and it's 50% off. This is the program you could do anywhere at home. Uh, you could do it at work. You could do it on the road. No equipment required. In space. Just go to mapswhite.com. Use the code WHITE50, W-H-I-T-E, and the number 50 at checkout for 50% off. And if you want to check out any of our other MAPS programs, we have several of them, including a strongman-inspired one, one for athletes, one for bodybuilders, uh, a lot of them. Just mm. go to mapsfitnessproducts.com to check that out. Man, I've just been, <laughs> bro, bro, I've been stressed out. Let's talk about spirulina. Days, yeah. Why are you so stressed out? Because because uh, you're getting older, my my warriors are at uh, at fits with each other right now. Oh, Dr- they're fighting. Ooh. Draymond and Duran are, are are into it. I'm waiting for the news to come out today. So they 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 flew out to Houston to. Mm. What's to, the deal? What's what was the catalyst to this? So, just 
two nights ago the at the end of the game right before overtime Durant and and uh Draymond Draymond brings the ball up there's six seconds left game's tied six seconds to get all the way down the court Draymond takes it all the way down there loses it loses it on a pass and then Durant chirps at him about not passing in the ball uh-huh. and Draymond goes off mm. and gets hella pissed but the rumor is that there's all kinds of back stuff like back the back story is that this is our this is Durant's his contracts up at the end of this year and rumors are that he's shopping other teams still mm. and it's starting to create this little division in the locker room right now where it's like dude you need to shit or get off the pot either yeah. you know either tell people like I'm not dealing with it we're playing we're going for a championship mm-hmm. this year we'll I'll, I'll worry about free agency at the end of the year or fucking tell people what's up and so I think and Draymond's like this emotional he's like the emotional player on our team mm-hmm. And I said our team, like it's mine. You yeah, know? I know. I'm like, wow, that's weird. <laughs> a little Freudian slip. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm so vested into this. Bro, right? do you have managing? Do you everything. have little little Warriors action action figurines no. at home? <laughs> yeah, you do. Can you dude. watch I don't. it? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, dream yeah. on. Hey, you guys need to play You're better. The ball. Sorry, Adam, yeah. coach. Yeah. We'll do what you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. But, but I hate you. I hate you. I love you. I did I tell you guys you. though that I have, I have, I have a position for all of you on the squad. Like I know the players that well and watched them play for so yeah. long that I, I think that there's a, a person on the Warriors team that represents everybody in the, the Mind Pump squad in the next meeting that we have with the all staff. I'm gonna I'm gonna drop it. Yeah, for we'll all. see if this makes sense. It yeah. makes yeah. total sense. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Is there right. a player on the team that that doesn't know how to play basketball? <laughs> 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 no, that wouldn't work. It wouldn't yeah. work. Yeah, so okay. yeah that's like the 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 manager, right? The yeah. one that like brings all the balls out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bring, I, yeah that'd be you. I bring out the wrong ball. But you yeah. are the prima donna the that ball. we're dealing with right now. You know what I'm saying? Oh, really? Yeah, Dur- yeah. Uh, so Durant is the one that we're dealing with, and you are Durant in this yeah. this situation. Come on, so. Beyonce. Really? Because I'm because I'm not shopping other teams. Well, he's an MVP. You know, so. Yeah, but I'm not shopping. A, I'm trying, don't make it sound nice now. <laughs> hey, speaking of basketball, what was that shoe that you posted on your thing? What's the big deal about that? Oh, it's a new release that's coming out right now. Is that you like that? It's real. I don't think it. I don't think it looks good. Yeah, no, I'm not. A, I, that's why I asked a poll on it. There's certain things that, as a collector, if you can get a hold of it, because I think it retails right now at like 300. But you grab a shoe like that, it'll sell for thousands of dollars. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. It doesn't look. It looks. It looks like um, it looks like a mummy. In space, a mummy in space. Yeah, like a moon shoe for a mummy. Yeah, I'm not. A, I mean, I'm you not. Know a, what I mean, yeah, no, I'm not Man, a big. That's a distinctive look. I'm it, not a big. Fan look at the shoe and then tell me if I'm not well, right. Was it? Where is it? Is it in your story? It's in Adam's uh, yeah, story. Yeah. No, it's the it's the Fear of God and uh, Nike collab, and th- it makes it popular when like these designers and people collab. That's like the thing now, mm. right? Like the big. When we grew up, Jordan started this, right? Yeah. The big Air Jordan thing and 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 the athletes. And now we've evolved into like influencers. That's and, fucking hideous. Yeah. Tell me it doesn't look like a mummy's space shoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it does, does, right? Yeah, totally. It looks kind of like the Back to the Future release that they did not that yeah, long ago. It kind of does. had a little more style. Like no. this is just kind of yeah, yeah. F- funky. We're heading that way, though. That's like, and I, you know, you, you guys see my shoes. Yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not quite into the big boots thing. It's too much stuff yeah, on your like, foot. Yeah, I, I, and I have big feet. I have size 12. So if you have, if you get big shoes and you have big feet already, then it looks like yeah. clown that's shoes. That's like mm-hmm. one step away from Uggs. You know what yeah. I mean? That's, that's not good. <laughs> Those are basketball it's Uggs. not a good basketball <laughs> Uggs. <laughs> that's exactly I'm so basic. It's, yeah. Like, yeah. it's what's in style right now. I, I, I can't, I can't, uh, I don't know, I can't jump on Now, knowing what you know about foot health and the muscles in your feet and stuff like that, don't isn't there a piece of you that sees this and goes, man, that's just... You're wearing like a big ass cast. Yeah, no, it's getting oh my it's God. it's worse for that. I, that's why I have to I have to counter it with when I come home, kicking it off and walking around barefoot. Just as walk much around. As I can. Yeah, I do a pretty I'll good start job. Start rocking my snowboarding boots. You know what I mean? It looks, <laughs> it looks, it looks pretty it, similar. It, they are heading in that direction. That will be in style. It is, yeah. bro. How you feeling, bro? You're turning. Uh, tur- what's the hold you turning? What's going on here? Twenty seven, dude. Yeah. Big, yeah. big two Join, seven. Joining the old crew. <laughs> no, over you, here. is it thirty seven? Yeah. Oh shit! You know what that means, right? Well, what? what? So they can't see right now on the podcast, but this is how close you are to being the the the, the creepy old guy trying to look young. <laughs> you're wow. like you're that close. <laughs> it's, it's, you're hitting the threshold. Dude. Oh, you're not there yet, right? Stop you're still, it. You're still good. Yeah, but I, pretty soon you'll be like, oh man, yeah. there's rules to this game. I, I got to wear my New Balance. Yeah, you can't can't pull <laughs> off the vest anymore. As, as you get old, as you get older, 
as you get older and you and you stay in style, there's there's certain things you can adopt, and there's certain. For example, like we're talking about these moon shoes. Like I don't know if I can do that. Like, but yeah. there are that's certain, a good question. Let's go there's ahead certain and say things. No. There's certain things that you can do. So what? Okay. So what? What are some of the things that you have to start to change because now well, you're, so on, you're you on the an, back end of thirty? So I'll give you an example. Like <laughs> when when the skinny jeans thing came out, that was really hard for me because I was still enjoying the. I loved baggy jeans. Dude. Oh, yeah. I just loved the yeah, feel of them. The, the comfort. Color. Yeah. But what I also loved because this is. This is the second time around that, you know, pegged pants or skinny yeah. jeans. So, but what I loved about that is I'm a shoe guy. And when you have tapered pants or it shows all of the shoes, shows the shoe off, it, the highlights, shoe. it highlights the shoe. So if you're a shoe person, I think that's really fucking cool. So I totally adopt the new movement of this, the skinny jeans. Now, the problem with it is I can't go, I can't go full skinny no one you i can't do high kicks yeah one i can't fit in them like if you have i i just or i'd look like jeremy buendia which i think he looks like he's wearing fucking tights all the time yeah. it's ridiculous yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. I, i'm i'm all for so plus I'm, you're yeah. plus you're taller than five five so yeah, yeah. you know what i mean so you i can i can do i can adopt well, smothers the giblets the, the fit look and the tapered and, and the tight roll at the bottom like i i can adopt that but i can't go full Skinny jean, tight. Because you're not young. That's that you're too, too old young. for that. Exactly. Okay. So yeah. that's an example of, of something like that, or you know, like the, the 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 way kids are wearing their hats all crazy again. That reminds me of when I was like. So you got to go straight on with the hat, the dad hat. You know what I'm saying? I you see me rocking the so yeah. yeah. So there's certain things that I will still wear. See, that, I've always been advanced for my. Do you know what I mean? I've always. <laughs> <laughs> I've always skipped a few grades. You've been in advanced. You age were dressing forever. like a seventy-year-old yeah, man yeah. when you were twenty-five. I was like, reading encyclopedias and fucking. Yeah, I, I was. I've been looking at clothes more for function than fashion for a little while now. You know, what I mean, I look at it and go, "That eh, looks good," but it's not that comfortable. Yeah, yeah. or it costs a little bit more. Let's try this one. High-waisted jeans, love but, it. I, yeah, and that's another. I think that's another thing about getting older. Elastic <laughs> jeans, <laughs> so much more comfortable. I could see you rocking the shit out of that. I think that's another thing about getting older is also. You 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 make some compromises for style, but then there's also that I won't bend because I want sure. to be comfortable, right? Sure, sure, so sure. there's I, I I will not wear something because it's in style if I'm not comfortable. How long does it take before you just can't wear tennis shoes with every outfit anymore? Like because you see you see this with guys like as they get older, some guys just uh, no, I'm still wearing tennis shoes with slacks. You can. I feel like that's never good, I, but well, I think I think uh, you know what I'm saying. I think because yeah. of like professional basketball players and athletes, they've they've now extended that for us. Yeah, well, they like, can do what they want, though. Dude, they wear they're, shorts with suits now. Yeah, they yeah. do everything. Plus, they're wow. pro basketball players. Yeah. Right. I feel like they yeah. can wear that, and it's all good. Well, you know, in my mind, I was supposed to be <laughs> that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I still identify with yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. I want to. I want to believe that I can get out there and still play. And I, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like the players. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You so, were there. You were almost there, and then you got hurt. Otherwise. <laughs> Yeah. Right, I mean, right. That's why I tell close. everybody. Yeah. Yeah, you know <laughs> so that that stair accident, yeah, yeah. you know. I like see Justin. Mm, I, I like had, I like Justin's style because it's he looks like he's gonna chop some wood. It's Mount, mountain cholo at, at all he, times. He's a mountain cholo, and I don't care how old he is. In fact, Listen. it will look better on him as he gets older. Could yeah. you imagine him right now? I'm growing into my seventy five, dressed like that. What yeah. would you think? I think to, I know what I would think. Yeah, I'd be like, this guy's obviously a fucking grizzly. Yeah, he doesn't care. Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> he I don't. Doesn't care. Not in a bad way though, in a good yeah. way. No, you know I what don't. I mean? I He'll fight you. Oh, you like yell at people? That's like where, where I'm getting <laughs> yeah. into. You know, the, <laughs> the old man yell. <laughs> You're going too fast. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Have you done that yet? Have you have you yeah. yelled at cars and shit? You yeah, have. I get really weirdly protected. Yeah, you know, around my community. Speaking of which, what's that community that I went down to hike uh, past Morgan Hill, and then you have to drive through this like weird Dutch community to get there? What? Ooh, that's not in Hecker Pass, is it? I don't know. It's this weird town you have to drive through to get to this oh, park. I remember you told me about that. Yeah. If you drive. Anything over four miles an hour, people come out of the house and they're going to kill you. It's very yeah. strange. Yeah. It's very strange. They're like churning butter. Is it, isn't it like a religious community? It feels violent. cultish. Yeah, I think it's like a religious community. It feels there. cultish. Yeah. We saw, an, you, I think you shared an article with us about it one time. Yeah. You're coming out with like pitchforks. Because I drove through to get to this park and I was going, I'm not, I mean, this is 100% true. I'm being literal. I was going seven miles an hour. Yeah, no, you're a slow driver <laughs> And already. people were freaking the, out. That, that's two miles too fast. Yeah, I'm not a slow driver anymore. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I think it was. Now they get the I new whip. A, I think it's because I had a Jetta. Oh. oh the, just, the new whip. Yeah. yeah. Got a lead foot now, yeah, huh? A little bit. Oh. I used to get a lot Laying of tickets. Down that infinity. Yeah. I don't want to get tickets anymore, but I used to get a lot yeah. of them. You getting a lot of cat calls in that now? Huh? A lot of cat yeah. calls in not that car really. now? No, not no, really. Not really. Like, whoo. You got to yeah. lean a little more when yeah. you drive. That's why. I guess. Uh, how? Sit sideways? To the side. Yeah. That's bad for your posture. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, they call it a DILF. Are you a DILF now or what? A DILF? Yeah. yeah. Jesus. I've had, a, I had some some girls say that out loud. I'm like, I don't know what she's talking about. She called me. you a DILF? It's, yeah, like, DILF! Like, I think, I think she said dildo. dildo. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I think that's what I it think, was. And that makes more sense. I don't take that actually. Yeah. You wanted it to be DILF. But <laughs> I, was like, yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah. You're all, thanks. I'll take that. I like that. Thanks. Anyway, Thank uh, so yesterday we were on a conference call with uh, our sponsor, Health IQ. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did I tell you guys what's going on with them? Very cool what they're doing. So Health IQ, for the listeners who don't know yet, they're, they do life insurance um, specifically for fit and healthy people, which is great because they're the pool that they're working with fit and healthy people. So they could charge a lot less yeah. uh, or get better rates for you than, than most other companies. And you do this health IQ quiz, which is a part of their rating, which is really cool. And we all took the quiz and the questions are actually legit. They're good questions. They're not stupid questions. No, not Ju- Justin failed it. I believe. Yeah. I so they know what they're doing. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah. anyway, they now are working with, we're going to cover people with uh, type two diabetes who are living a healthy lifestyle. Hmm. Now, so, what's really cool about that is that normally in the past, if you were somebody like that, you just were you're automatically you're screwed, right? Yeah. Your rates go through the roof. Yeah, pre-existing conditions, yeah, you're you're looking at and like that's the real thing, high rates. That's the thing with type two diabetes is you can have it, but also be fit and healthy and all that stuff, and ha- have a much more healthy lifestyle. But a lot of companies, when you go to get life insurance, as soon as you tell them type two diabetes. Your your rates are just insane. Right. So now Health IQ is going to be uh, is going to be working with. I think they're the first life insurance product ever to reward type two diabetics for living a healthy lifestyle. I think this is very smart. I think it's brilliant. Yeah. Because you know type two diabetes has exploded. Yeah. And there are a lot of people who get that diagnosis and then just like change their life. You know, right, right. healthy or whatever. Yeah. But they still have to mark that down. So. I, I love that we're working with such a forward thinking. Oh, that's exciting, company. man. Now, yeah. were we? She mentioned on the call. Are we allowed to allude to what they're what they're trying to do too? Because I know that they're. This was the beginning of that. It was the type two diabetes, but they're also. Uh, well, working. they're just they're they're going in the direction of of working with, of pr- providing people who lead a healthy a life a healthy life, uh, better rates, and that doesn't have to just be narrowed down to people who don't have you know what would be considered pre existing conditions. So I think this is the first place that they're and I don't want to speculate or say anything that I'm not supposed to but right now it's just type 2 diabetes and I think that's pretty cool no no very cool yeah there's a big uh, I think they're getting interviewed by I forgot who was, who was there, there's some like news articles about this, this Bloomberg is, was it Bloomberg yeah there was a uh, Bloomberg article that just dropped just the other day Taylor shared it with me it's really pretty, yeah yeah no it's all, that's one of the f- cool things is seeing like these sponsors that we you know started working with like you know shit health IQ has been I think a, over a year now when we first partnered up with them on the YouTube channel and then we've moved into the podcast and it's just cool to see them get them get highlighted in articles and things like that. I think it's really neat to see that. I, I, yeah. I think it's who found them. Was it Taylor that found them or did they f- I think find they reached us? Out, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think Taylor might have. I think Taylor might have. Really? Yeah. I like that. I think he thinking. might have seen him somewhere, and then he did his research. There's not very many companies that we're fucking with right now that have come to us. I'm trying to think who's reached out to us that we are working with right now for the most part. I mean, uh, Organifi reached out to us, you know, but that's, that's one of our longest standing relationships, mm-hmm. uh, which reminds me, I have to actually call them and talk about next year because that's already coming up. But their Organifi is one of the only companies that reached out to us, Thrive. Mm. You came after Force Event. Almost everybody else that we fuck with is somebody that we – that we, we wanted pers- to work yeah, with. Yeah, we pursued yeah. and you know, Taylor courted him for a while. Yeah, speaking of Organifi, are you doing the Christmas blend yet or is it too early? <laughs> it's too early. It's You wait? It's, it's too early. <laughs> December only. It's yeah. like those assholes that already put up their lights. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's right. How you, dare you? So yeah, you don't, you don't, you're not going to do that, huh? Not, no, right now I'm, right now all I'm, I'm on the, the pumpkin, the pumpkin spice thing, dude. Uh, That's yeah. like, I'm on that pun, kick right pumpkin. now. Pumpkin. Yeah, pumpkin. Yeah. Pumpkin. Yeah. Pumpkin. Pumpkin. Yeah. Pump, yeah. Pump. I'll say it however the fuck I want to. That's true. <laughs> That's true. It's my, it's my, I don't know why I put damn my, show. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why I'm doing that. You're right, right Adam. Yeah. Say pumpkin. Yeah. Yeah, however, however the I hell know. I want to say. Yeah, we're, we're just autocorrect. No, I'm actually almost all the way through that, which, by the way, Organifi, I would love another shipment of that, please. Yeah, it's really fucking I think delicious. Doug got shafted on that deal. I think they only they only sent three. What the fuck, Organifi? Well, hey, there man. is four of us. Why, yeah. yeah. Why are you being so light about yeah, it? Yeah, weird how we decide he didn't get, the, he didn't get one. <laughs> yeah, we just 
fucking <laughs> sorry, Doug. Well, Doug uh, doesn't have to do the commercials. And I use gold juice every night. I know before bed every yeah, single we, night. Doug we fight over almost that every gold night, juice. Yeah. Really, I'm with Doug on that. It's it's a uh, pretty routine for me. That with a couple drops of the Ned thing, man, has uh, been like my that just puts me to sleep. That's double, your, double dose of awesome, right? There. That's your night night yeah. formula. It Good. is mm, no it, it, stuff. Sleepy and time. You, you brought it up first. I think you were one of the first ones to try it with the the almond milk and then you froth oh, the coconut. God. Oh man. Yeah. It's like you a treat. Drink it as a tea. No, yeah, and that we drink a lot of tea, and so I think it's a it's been a great way for me to wind down at the end of the night drinking. Speaking Dude. of cool things to try, what do you guys think of these uh, nicotine lozenges? I had you guys try. It's it's a nice little. It's cool. Zing. Interesting, right? I was reading about nootropics and stuff, and I didn't realize this, but nicotine by itself, by the way, this isn't cigarettes, so cigarettes are terrible for you. We're smoking Marble Reds right now. No, no, no. Yeah, we're thinking about getting sponsored by Marble. No, nicotine on its own in low doses, like half a milligram to a milligram, is actually one of the more widely accepted actual nootropics. Actually improves uh, executive function, cognitive function, verbal fluency. Yeah, pretty wild. So I bought these lozenges just to fuck with, see what you guys think. Now the drawback of that is nicotine is also highly addictive, right? Addictive. Nicotine in low doses is about as addictive as caffeine. Caffeine, right? Yeah. yeah so, I was gonna say it's probably uh, similar. So it's like it is addictive, yes, but like caffeine is. But that's still not a small thing to consider because have you ever tried to go completely off caffeine? Sucks. Yeah, It'd be interesting to see like, if it's if it kind of resets the same way too. Because I notice if I take a few days off of caffeine, we talked about this on the podcast the other day. You like, just feel way better off. Yeah, and then I and then when I go back, it's like oh, that one cup of coffee just lights yeah. me up. I wonder if the nicotine will be like that. I wonder if I hmm. use it for a while because you've got them here. It's an uh, interesting. Sure. It's an interesting. It's a combination people have done for a long time. Now they've done it through cigarettes. But and by the way, a cigarette has got like I don't know ten milligrams of nicotine in it. Oh, so it's so the cigarettes way more than way the, stronger. Oh. No, no, no. If you use nicotine as a nootropic, you're going to use like half a milligram to two milligrams. Oh, I think is what I've read. Okay, so it's nowhere near that. No, yeah. no, no, no. Plus, it's not. It doesn't hit you as quickly. The reason why cigarettes are so addictive. Well, one, nicotine has got addictive properties. Two, it's a high dose of nicotine, and it hits you very quickly, mm. and it goes away very quickly. So you have to keep bringing it to your mouth and hitting it. Yeah. And so it's a very addictive form of something that's already uh, addictive. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and this is for all things that are addictive. The faster it acts, uh, the, the more addictive properties it has. This is why smoking marijuana, for example, is more addictive properties than like edibles. <laughs> People don't typically, ha- you know, have a problem with marijuana edibles, but they'll t- have a problem with, yeah. you know, with smoking or whatever. So, anyway, kind of fascinating, dude. I got it. Okay, so I know you've been through this process, Sal, and I, w- I was telling you, like, like last night was like a pivotal uh, thing that happened to me in terms of that moment where your kid Uh-oh. figures out Santa Claus doesn't exist. This happened. Yeah. How did he figure it My out? My oldest. I, I'm I'm pretty sure like kids at school you Someone know had some him. influence, but Fucking like kids. even then the whole time I could not sell him on the idea of it. Even as a little kid, like he was just like you're older, not boy. buying it. He's a smart kid, man. He's just too sharp. He's wise. Yeah, and so he he was always like, and so like Courtney was downstairs reading a you know a story about the whole thing and with Santa Claus and like <clears throat> talking about him coming through the chimney and then this and he's like. There's no way that can happen. Like, it just physically can't happen. You know, he's a human being. He doesn't shrink down like that. Like, he's like going through all like the the science behind it. He's like, this is just impossible, mom. You know, and she's like, shh, because like yeah. you know, like the younger brothers are right there. And so, you know, she brought him up and and it's like, you got to talk to him. He like he knows. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, he knows what? What are you talking about? No, no, he knows. You know how you fuck Santa with him with that? You tell me like, if you don't believe, he probably won't bring anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what, if you don't believe, he might not bring anything. You, so yeah. it's your call. <laughs> well, yeah, see, he's going to call bullshit on that too. So what we did with him is like, well, you know what? You can be, you can be Everett Santa, you know? So mm. he's, he took it on now. He likes the idea of it where he's going to like carry the tradition on for his younger brother now, and, and give him the Santa gifts. Now, are you, either one of you doing, I thought the... The fake boxes under the tree was the most brilliant. Oh, you yeah. like this that? The most brilliant yeah. parent idea. Yeah. So I've ever what you do about. is you take you take boxes <laughs> or psychologically like traumatize. Yeah. No, no, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. it's brilliant. Yeah. It's fucking yeah. brilliant. No, I know. You take boxes. Here's em- a parent hack for you. Empty ba- empty boxes. You wrap them up like presents. You put yeah. them under the tree. 
you know, your kid no, you acts know what up. I want to do is you take that fucking elf the... on the shelf and throw him in the fire. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That escalated. Yeah, that did. I was just going to take the fake presents and throw and burn them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just yeah. to show the kids. What right. Time so every time he doesn't obey, right? He's you're supposed to clean. Oh, his there room. goes that toy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you just throw throw the empty box in the fire. Yeah. Let it light up, yeah. dude. Uh, sorry, buddy. I think you got three left. That's yeah. some gangster <laughs> shit. But that's some shit I would do right there for sure. Fucking. I'd set it out by like July. July, our trees up. You know what I'm saying? All year long, we got presents. You got a hundred presents. Yeah. Hope they get there. Yeah. <laughs> hope you make it by hope then. They, hope they make it to December. Oh my God, that's terrible. <laughs> oh, dude. You know what I used to do? So I, I didn't actually do that. But you know what I used to do? There's a fo- I don't know what the phone number is, but I bet I can find it if I go online. There's a number you can call on your phone, and it's a fake Santa, Santa yeah. voicemail. Yeah. And so what I used to do to my, my son and my daughter, my daughter used to lose her shit. My son caught on a little earlier, but my daughter used to lose her shit. I'd call the fake number... And I'd be like, that's it. I'm calling Santa right now. And I put it on speakerphone. Yeah. And she'd be like, no, no. And then the voicemail <laughs> will pop up. Yeah. And I'd leave a fake voicemail like, oh, you know, hey, Santa. So she's not, you know, she's not doing what she's supposed to. So I think we should put the presents on hold for now. And then yeah. I'll call you later. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. Shit. Yeah. Dude, I used to take, so the the Sonos speaker is like all wire, you know, wireless. And uh, so I used to like have it preset for all these like Christmas songs and stuff. And like. Um, I would basically like, you know, we were talking about like the, the elf on the shelf and like he would, he was watching them and all this stuff. And then I would just strategically play it. Like when they were doing something bad, I'm like, Oh no, he's watching the music's <laughs> happening. And then they'd freak out like, ah, oh! and they totally stop in their tracks. It worked like a charm. This is it, that kind of parenting, which we all do. That's the equivalent of a salesperson saying today's the last day. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just cheap. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, it has cheap. You're not gonna get tricks. a present. Yeah, exactly. Oh, total parlor tricks. Oh, oh you dude. don't want to buy it, but it fucking okay. works. It does work. Day. It does work. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's hilarious. We bro. might be good parents. We might not. So you guys want an uh, article that will infuriate you oh, uh, no. of today? Please, you ready for this? Please. Is it political? What is uh, it? Let's get to um, this. It's not. Well, maybe kind of. So in Kansas City, there was some people who set up a huge like picnic area with food for the homeless. So they were like, we're going to feed the homeless. We're going to set up this big picnic area. Yeah, we want to do good things. Officials from the health department, accompanied by armed police, stopped these volunteers. It was their, <coughs> they, they called themselves Free Hot Soup Kansas City from feeding the homeless at four locations, claiming the food has not been inspected. So they're like, we can't, sorry, you can't give this food to homeless people who are obviously starving. Nobody's inspected this, and you haven't gotten the required permits. And then they went on and poured bleach all over the food to ruin it. Oh, Whoa. my God. Uh-huh. Wow. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Was this the Gestapo? Can you believe that what shit? F- what the hell? They went and poured bleach on the food? To prevent them from giving it to... Now, when you read something like that, do you, is there, there's got to be something deeper to that story, right? I mean, did, it, did a bunch of cops really roll up? On a group of fucking nice people trying to give free food to people, I don't and they think, said, "No, think, you can't do this." And then they probably revolted, and then they said, "Fuck you, we're gonna pour bleach on the food." No, like it, what? This is so they already had bleach on this, them. Too. This was the <laughs> they, they, right. They're rolling up with some bleach. This is the the agency is the one that poured the bleach, not the not the cops. The cops were there to protect them, right? But that's that's what they did to keep the homeless people safe because the food, of course, wasn't wow. Uh, thanks. Yeah, was was wasn't inspected by them yeah. and they didn't pay for the permits because you, you got to understand is if everybody just started helping homeless people then these people would have no jobs then and this they world, would lose their funding this world would be probably be a better oh place God. is that, God, what, God is that what would happen yeah. can, can, you, <laughs> can you can you believe that no, it's, that they would actually do something that's like that infuriating. that's infuriating to me no, so no. It makes me so angry so it's like it's funny, and I, I, I you know, I, so was it day, illegal for you to do what you did the other day by dropping our totally. our, our street guy? The, yeah, the I you're think such a rebel. I think technically it's not legal for you to give someone uh, food that uh, homeless people food. Right. But you know what makes me laugh? What if I just fucking invited my friends over and had a picnic? And that's what they were trying to tell the the, the inspectors. They're like, we were just having a picnic with our friends. Now, is there something that I don't know? Like, yeah, there's like a a, a clan of of fake ha- or friendly people that are poisoning bums no no and so <laughs> I don't think they're trying to protect them i don't think that's politically this is like correct. the same thing <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't think yeah, call them. <laughs> wow yeah there's, there's a lot of layers to that oh we have a we have a we have a politically correct name for bums now too Holy- 
<laughs> Actually, I think you Trans- do. We do? Yeah. Jesus Almost Christ. Very close. I can't fucking win here, I know dude. You, can't. you can't, dude. I know you can't. Yeah, you, Does, you can't. Is there a website I can go to so I don't get fucking yeah. yelled at every single they time I say some PC stupid shit Bible, like that? Dude. They change the words all the time, don't oh, they? Oh, they do. No, literally, they, they went and, and let me see what they said. Here's a tweet uh, from the agency. They blocked the volunteers because their gatherings are open to the general public and the food is not stored at the required temperature for food safety. Thank goodness that they did that. Because they imagine the poor they might, people. They might get some crazy they food might have poisoning. diarrhea. Yeah. 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 Nobody yeah. wants that. It's so infuriating to me. It makes me so uh, angry. Anyway. Sad to see that. There was where? Kansas City, you said? That was in Kansas City. What the fuck, Kansas but City? But there's been, there's, been, there's been situations in San Jose, too, where people have just like yeah, California bought like a bunch of pizzas and gone to... Because, you know, there's areas where you have these uh, homeless encampments, right, where yeah. there's a whole bunch of them, and they'll bring pizzas and stuff. Dude, and they'll get stopped. And, and it's like, I would rather give them food than money because it's like, I know this is, you know, it, this isn't going towards drugs or like enabling anything else. There's also this side of it that a lot of people don't think about. When you're sitting there, setting up a picnic, preparing the food and feeding people, there's also the connection that comes from that, that you don't necessarily get from just... Just handing out, you know, money. You know, it's like, course. hey, listen, it gives I'm, you perspective, man. It gives you, you perspective, and then the, the people helping them, the, yeah. the, they get to know who they are, and it just feels different. I think it it comes across differently. Not saying that money doesn't help, but but man, could you? Can I tell? You, I would be in jail. I'm telling you right now. If I set up a picnic mm-hmm. and I was giving food to the homeless, and some agency from the state came, poured bleach on the food, and poured bleach on yeah, it, yeah, I'm liable to. Yeah. I would for liable sure, to punch someone. I would for sure, for sure probably, probably get For sure, I'd get thrown in jail. For sure, 100. Yeah, yeah, I'd get in a fight with someone. I'm pouring bleach for, on them <laughs> for doing yeah, some shit yeah, like that. Yeah, your hair's turned white. Anyway, so are those permits expensive? You know, have any idea? I don't care how much they cost. You mean if I have to get a fucking permit to give someone who needs food food? No. <laughs> you yeah. Suck on my. Yeah. Freak dick. Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, that's the eagle. Liberty dick. cock. Ah! <laughs> All right. Ah, bring us in. Permit. I don't need a permit for that shit. Sorry. I just went wow, off a little bit was, on yeah, that. That was, that was, anyway, yeah, see there. See there's hot. the there's the uh, there's the article right there. Wow. Isn't that crazy? No, no, I, I, yeah. I feel your passion though. Sure. Uh here's another another interesting uh study from the same uh organization. I love these articles. Uh you know that teen suicides are lowest in states that have more school choice? What does that mean? You mean like a charter, or lower. Or private? Yeah, or? so they actually did this study and they found that well, hmm. well, that when kids have the ability like to options. choose yeah, schools, that suicide uh, drops a little bit. Which, well, that makes sense. I could see if you're a- uh, Man, school must really suck for some kids. Well, you know? I could I could understand if you were like, a, I mean, I, I was here, right? I got pulled yeah. out of school from, from being bullied. So, that might be part of it, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I imagine if there was a mi- another middle school right down the street, I would have went to the other middle school instead of being homeschooled. But I I lived down the street from the only middle school within like 30 minutes. Yeah. So I could see if there was other schools that that would have changed. Now, I wasn't suicidal over the situation, but some, I'm sure there's some kids yeah, that are that could fully yeah. to the point where they feel like that. So mm-hmm. that makes sense. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But you can't really fucking, you can't fix that. Right, you can't make more schools come into areas if there's not enough people. Yeah, to- it sucks that that kids have that experience going to a place where they're supposed to be. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Learn kids, and are you kidding me, dude? Kids are fucking the hard man. Yeah, yeah. kids it's, are. It's like proving grounds. I mean, that's that's where we all learn how to figure this thing out. You yeah. know, get into the real world. Do you guys ever? Get, you guys get? You got you got it pretty bad. Did you ever get fucked with, Justin? Mm-hmm. Yeah, quite. You a did bit. really? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely, dude. I told you when one year I broke my arm. Well, first time I broke it, um, I fell off the monkey bars, and I was playing with some kids. And the second time, I got bullied and thrown into like this dried up creek bed and broke my arm that same year. I just had recovered, and then it broke it again. This How big, many? This, no way. This guy was four years older than me and just fucking threw me in. In this uh, dried creek, we bed. should give him a shout out. You yeah. Remember his name? Hey, you <laughs> no, fucker! I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember his name, but my dad had some words with his dad, and it got ugly. Oh man! Now, yeah. have you got? Have you guys dealt with anything with your kids yet? Have you had to deal with anybody bullying your your son or daughter? Anything like that at all? Yet? You know, um, my kids. I don't know. Maybe it's because the school my kids yeah, go to. They, they intervene real quick. 
uh, these days, I think. But uh, yeah, there's been situations for sure with like kids that were problematic and uh, there's been like everybody gets called well, in. Well, how about like, because what's more popular now is is the virtual bullying, right? Yeah. Like that's not, it's not yeah. really popular. Like everyone, these kids are pussies. That's going to be a problem. So most of sure. these kids aren't, aren't, you know, talking shit or, or bullying in person. Mm-hmm. Most of them are a keyboard warrior style, yeah. right? So now is that happening? Do you guys have your kids active on Facebook and Instagram and things like that? No. Or are they not there yet? No. I'm not there yet. I'm sure Sal, you no, my I don't. My kids are still not my my son. Well, my my daughter's too young, but my son's thirteen. He's not on Instagram or anything like that. Oh yet. wow, he's not uh, there yet, huh? No. Now is that because he doesn't want to, or have you said, hey, we're gonna hang out? He hasn't. Or? He actually hasn't expressed any interest in getting on Instagram. Oh, that's great. But I I I don't know if I'd want him to get on there anyway. Now, do you yeah. think that? I'm on there. I don't want to see what I'm posting. Well, do you, you guys th- have seen some of my memes? Do you think it's possible that <laughs> he has one? It's just not his name and like pictures of you, or so he can. It could very well be. You know, it could very well be because I I don't know. It's I, such a different world today. I mean, th- th- you have access to s- everything. I mean, I, you got to think at school. Mm-hmm. He's a teenage boy. Mm-hmm. He's he's now. Did you figure? Is he going through that? Is he figuring? Uh, like, is he? Uh, well, how's, how do I say this without sounding really crude? Well, just puberty. Well, yeah. Is he jerking off yet? I don't know. You don't probably. Know. You know, if, if, that's so God. Poor hope, hope a kid never listens to this. <laughs> yeah. But hey, thirteen year old. <laughs> right to the it's heart a, of the matter. It's yeah, coming. It's, very it's normal, coming around. That's a very normal, natural thing, right? Yeah, at that yeah, age, yeah. right? That's what I'm. So what I'm. Why I'm alluding to that is is he, if he's if he's at that age where that's happening, I would think that Instagram is probably one of the best yeah, places Instagram for is. a young kid. I don't see. Here's what I don't get. Or about that's that. where I would be. But why? Why would you go to Instagram when you could go porn? Right. It's well, right there. Well, that's you, because it, you're when you're a kid. You that's you don't like, know yet. That's too much, bro. Yeah, you think just a, you're, you're just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a is. just a fourteen year old girl in a bikini is a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I remember what used to excite me as a 13, 14 year old boy. Like, yeah, I was. I didn't need to see that. someone getting railed in a fucking yeah, in a bathroom. Yeah, like, yeah that was way too. I was much thinking for me. about that because you would talk s- about making out at that. Yeah, age. you'd see girls like on you know like uh, that you go to school with, and of course you you know the ones that you're like, oh wow, she's you know she's beautiful, whatever. Now you can see them posting all these pictures all the time and like, right. going to the beach. Like, whoa. I, I think. Or were you already into like hardcore porn when you first started doing well, that stuff? Because so I wasn't. I wasn't into because that. Because you didn't have access. You're right. That's fair. But I mean. Because I, I think the market is. <laughs> it, what's, what's changed is the perception. The market is so flooded now that the perception. Like, I'll give you an example. When, when we were kids, if a regular girl, I don't care who she was, just a regular girl posted a picture or took a picture of herself bending over in a bikini and showed people, people would be like, oh my God, I can't believe you're doing that. That's basically porn. Today, that's every girl on Instagram. Yeah. Every normal girl on Instagram. No, I have cut off shorts with her ass cheeks hanging out. Yeah, they're all posting so, this shit all So do you place. really think as a 13-year-old boy that's not that's not sexy enough or hot enough or you think it's become so norm that they're desensitized? I think they're so desensitized. I, I think, think a lot of them are so yeah. desensitized. Look at uh, erectile dysfunction has exploded amongst uh, the young age group of men. Or imploded. You know yeah. I mean? yeah. yeah. Anyway. It's, it's, it's gotten much worse in boys, I think, uh, between the ages of like 18 and 25 or something like that. Now, do you, is this which a, had never existed, by the way. Is before. this a conversation that you, you are hoping or you think you're waiting for him to have with you or do you think- Oh, I've already had it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, we've already had this conversation where I've talked to him about what happens to the brain when you get aroused, and if you if you push it too hard and continue to do that, you'll become desensitized to the point where real life then becomes bland and boring. You didn't say like the you'll grit hairy palms. No, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you do too much, you get hairy. Palms. Well, yeah. isn't there a whole movement the the no. Fap. Spank it, no, no fap. What That's what it? they call it. No fap, no fap. Yeah. November, or yeah. whatever. Oh, and no, no nut. November, no nut. November. God, that's crazy. That's, yeah. that's a thing now because because yeah, people like, are self they're identifying that this like is a, a problem. Yes, yeah. that this is becoming an issue. I, that's the thing. That's I feel like abstaining and you know abstinence will become like popular Dude, or something. How I, weird would that be? I've met more and more people where I've had this conversation. Guys, you know, my age or a little younger, thirties. Who say, oh no, I don't even watch porn ever. I don't watch it anymore because they had developed a problem and it had caused them to become desensitized. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? To where they had issues when they were with their wives or girlfriends. So they just don't even don't even look at it anymore. Yeah. It's okay. pretty crazy. Which is weird. You know, it, it reminds me of anything else that we do. Like we, you know, we now we, we have access to all this food. Yeah. So we have to like we realize self-control. that's not the answer. Okay, you, let's rein it in. Yeah, like all like everything requires a level of 
uh, self-control. Mm-hmm. Once you have access to all these things, you have to start to learn how to, like alcohol. We all have access to alcohol after the age of 21 and it's fun to get drunk, but why don't you just get drunk all the time, right? You have yeah. to, you start to realize that, okay, there's a, there's, it's okay sometimes, but all the time. Well, not good. the anticipation a lot of times is all the fun. You know, mm-hmm. like we're we're eliminating a lot of the anticipation, you know, towards these like, you know, delayed, uh, gra- you know, you're, you're, you're trying to get this gratification, but we're just there. Like you get it right away. You know, now we have to create this, this sort of uh, process, you know, in mm-hmm. front of that yeah. so we can actually enjoy I, it. More. I don't know. I don't know if I was just, maybe I was just a really innocent, innocent boy growing up or whatever, but I don't, I don't know if I would be seeking, I was more into the girls that I was going to school with. Yeah. Like that was that to me. What about when you got caught with the mag- the freaking mm-hmm. videos by your mom? Yeah, that was in high school, bro. Yeah. Well, how old were you? Like my junior year in high school. Dang, those yeah. are like little novelties though. You'd find you know, yeah magazines, and even then, like it, like I, ask me how many times I really pulled it out and watched it, and masturbated to yeah. it. I mean, and then well, that I, just required a lot of stuff. Yeah. Oh, I'm asking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seventy two times. How many times? Yeah. <laughs> No, I mean, for the most part, it was, uh, I mean, honestly, when I think back, your, your hormones are flying so much as you, the wind blows and you're excited. Yeah. So yeah. just the thought of some girl that I had a the crush on blows. was enough yeah. for me. And uh, heaven forbid, I had one of her photos that she gave me or something, you know what I'm saying? Like then it was, that's all I needed. I mm-hmm. And she didn't need to be, na- she'd be, could be her school one. Where she's, she's just smiling. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's it. Like that's yeah. at that age, I didn't, I didn't need to go. I didn't need to seek like, more novelty. Like, that was novel like, enough for like, me. Oh, like, you have a really soft sweater on. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 I want to yeah. hug you. Whoa. Right. No, it's uh, and it's, what's interesting too, is as you, when you're a kid, you know, like in your early teens and mid teens, as you're developing, your brain starts to develop these kind of hard wires. Um, and so exposing yourself to that much novelty may set you up for, I mean, what may be permanent or, or close to permanent type issues later on. Because think about it this way, like humans, and we'll, we'll talk about ma- mainly males because we're the ones that are so visually, typically visually stimulated and, and more likely to do that kind of stuff. When in human history has any anybody been exposed to that potential amount of novelty of visual stimulation right yeah. not never only, not unless only, you were like a prince or something not only that but it's like it's not real it's not reality like that's not how it get goes down like maybe when you've been together with a girl for a long time like you role play and you do fun stuff like that where you you push her down in the bathroom and you do some shit like that but when you're a <laughs> <What>? <laughs> when you're what? when you're 17 year fuck? when you're a 17 year old boy you know what I'm saying? You're not fucking doing shit like that. You're again. You're like, you're. That's the weirdest. That's the weirdest. What? <laughs> hey, babe, I want to try some a new fantasy. I'm gonna push you down to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you talking about? Sorry, that's probably the last porn up thing. Yeah, I, I was gonna say uh, yeah, yeah, you got some interesting <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. selections. You, you look at my, <laughs> my my search bar's a little off, right? <laughs> that's the fuck. <laughs> Doug's dead. Over I'm there. sorry, yeah. dude. I don't know where to go from here. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Redo. Yeah. Uh, record skip. Yeah. Katrina doesn't like that all the time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She broke her arm last time. <laughs> ah, yeah. Why? Yeah. This again? Every, everybody wondered what surgery she was going on right there. We were fixing shit. That's what was going That's on. The f- oh, man. <laughs> That's the funniest thing I've heard in a long time. Uh, no, but I mean, but really, I mean, think of every freaking video well, you've ever watched. Well, on- dude, porn. Porn, look at it this way. Look at porn actresses. They're exaggerated human form. They they have boobs that don't exist in nature. They have proportions yeah. that don't exist in nature. Fake they lips. Have moves that they act, nobody knew. To they do. act in ways that nobody would ever act. Like right. you know, when 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 is a woman answer the door to the pizza guy? No. But like, hey, thanks for delivering the pizza. Hey, Can I thank you? You know what? Yeah. Yeah. Let me Let's thank skip you the like tip. This. Yeah, exactly. And I'm going to come in. Wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it just happens. It's really fast. Well, we know what he's watching. Well, <laughs> of, course, of course, his is like, of course, his is cheese and anal. Yeah, you know oh, my saying? God. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's what pops up first in Justin. Cheese, yeah. pizza, and anal? Yeah, yeah. I'm in. I'm, Adam's, I'm getting the popcorn. Adams is pushing porn. You know what I mean? <laughs> pushing, pushing each other down. Topple porn. Yeah. yeah. Bathroom specific. Oh, my God. Justin's yeah. got cheese in every title. Yeah. That's just, cheese. <laughs> 
easy cheese spread. I got your on pizza for you. Yeah. Extra cheese. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, speaking, of, uh, speaking of food, I'm excited for the Thanksgiving dinner. I got to change directions. Yeah. yeah this Sorry. shit's getting too I know. Get Sorry. Us out of it's here. getting too dark, man. Apologize I to feel our, like it's one of our, first our, our new audience that's listening. There's always oh, new people that listen. This is, is, we just lost 100 people. We have to weed them out. It's like an old. We lost 100 people. Yeah. It's a reference to our old episodes. Yeah, we got to weed them out. I was. No, I was thinking about the. I'm talking about the Thanksgiving dinner that or, or, or our our company, you know, for the team leaders or whatever dinner, because uh, Doug brought in the 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 deep fryer. Yeah, that thing's awesome looking, dude. That's a high tech one. Excited. I just shot some B roll with Eli and Taylor of us getting all the uh, the meat out and defrosting it. Right, so we got to start defrosting it today to get it ready. Is that today that you? Do yeah, that? yeah. No, we just did that this morning. Did you look up how long you got to deep fry a turkey for? No, but I did look up how long I had to def- – because defrosting it takes a lot longer than actually deep frying it. So of we, course. Yeah, so we had to give it a good 24 hours to uh, defrost before we, we deep fry. But I believe I, the deep fry is fast. I was there. I remember I think it. it's like 30 minutes. I don't remember. I'll look it up, but I definitely know it's not like cooking it, it in the like, oven. feels like, yeah, it'd be fast in the oven. And what's the oil? Is it peanut oil yeah, that you're supposed using, to use? Yeah, we're using peanut, peanut oil. Mm. I don't know if that's supposed to, but mm. I know that's what Doug got. Well, I, I mean, we're deep frying a turkey, so let's not pretend like we're being healthy. Yeah, yeah, you know I mean? yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're not supposed to use the healthiest yeah, oil or whatever. No, no. I don't think you can deep fry with MCT oil, can you? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nasty. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but that looks, uh, oh, he, he just looked it up. What does it say there, Doug? 15 pounds? No, that's not it. Three minutes per pound. Oh. That seems fast. How many pounds is that turkey? About 14. Ooh. Oh, so that's a pretty good, yeah. uh, so that's not that bad. It's less than an hour. Yeah, yeah well, right? Yeah, no, it'll be fast. It'll be that's why I wasn't go. worried about that. The, well, it'll take longer to cook. So we have a beef tenderloin. Ooh. We have a what do you call a, a like a, a lamb ball? It's not a lamb chop. It's like a it's like a, a big. It's that's like another. A, it's like a, a carcass. That's another uh, one of Justin's nicknames when he was in junior high. Lamb yeah. chop. Yeah, butter. No butter ball and lamb ball. Lamb ball. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? I, I mean, it's is it a tenderloin meat. too, or what? I don't know. Lamb ro- roast? Is not that sure? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't understand. You know, you, here's the trouble. What do you do with the oil afterwards? When you, how do you throw it away? You can't just dump Ooh. it. You can pour it down the neighbors. No, you can't. That's illegal. What do I do? Put it, I, you put it on put Craigslist. Put it in the soil. No, feed, no, no. feed the homeless yeah, people. No, like, no, no, no. Bury no. it or what? God, you put it on Craigslist. What? what? Yes. There are people that will come and get that oil for free because they'll use it to- Power their cars? Yep. They'll power uh, cars and shit with that. That's right. Really? Yes. And they, and those are those cars you get behind. It just smells like French fries. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What the fuck? You love yeah. those. Is there a, <laughs> is there a McDonald's <laughs> around here? <laughs> no. And you just keep following no, them. No, for reals. You can use it to, people will come pick it up. I know this because my cousin did that. He put it on Craigslist and someone came right by and picked it up. Like fast? Like people are like- Like the next day. Really? Yeah. I didn't even know about yep, that. Yep, yep. Can we fry other stuff in this oil? Or once you use it for the turkey, are you I'm done? I'm bringing some Twinkies. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Can we fry some stuff let's, let's in there? No, we are stuff. not doing something like that. No. Why? I refuse corn to Corn dogs or anything? No. Oh, oh, what a great dogs, idea, right? Justin. It's yeah. our, we're already a I health and fitness bringing. podcast deep frying a turkey. It's a... <laughs> It's all right, you and know, we're getting it on film. We're justifying because it's we got you know butcher box and the grass fed everything, so it's so that's our. We just ruined it with yeah. the deep fry. <laughs> that's yeah. our treat, you know. We're not having dessert. Yeah, that's like, like people that go to McDonald's and you yeah. get the super size. There's meat no that, Jello and salads. Your diet yeah. coke, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, are we doing Jello salad too? No, I hate that they it's, call that salad. It's not salad. <laughs> and then they put fucking marshmallows on. What it? are your guys's? What are your least favorite dishes that families bring to bring to Thanksgiving? I'm not uh, a fan of ham. I don't like ham. I don't like. You know what I don't like? I don't and like the Jello. Yeah, I don't honest. like a uh, marshmallow sweet potato dish that everybody makes. Oh yeah, that's gross. Uh, it's just yeah. like candy, dude. No. Yeah, it is a bunch don't of candy. It's way too sweet for it me. It is. I'm not a big fan of ham. Do you guys like ham? I love mm, ham. Not really. Just sliced ham, just like that with mustard. Oh, oh shit! Mustard. Love. Wait mustard. a minute. I, that sounds like it might make it good. Oh, dude, that's I have to have mine like, like a that. Dijon. Even, yeah, well, yeah, that works too. Absolutely. Yeah. You talking about the uh, one like with the little brown, brown speckles yeah, in yeah. it? Brown speckle. Yeah, mu- a little bit of mustard, and you just dip a little bit in there. A little CV. Mm. We will have that for yeah. sure. Really? Yeah. yeah, that'll be on the list. I'll have that. I've never thought that actually sounds like it might be good. Love mm. that. You know what I don't like is when the hams got the what do they put on? It? It's all glazed and shit. Yeah. Oh fuck. Brown Stop sh- putting pineapple on meat. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so angry. Ugh. Pizza, meat, fucking pineapple's good Bro. by itself. There's no need to throw it on meat. It's like, a, it's like an island thing. I right? like the pineapple on my ham. I feel like Hawaiians, because they had they can certain get away things, with it, right? they're just like, we're going to make this not Hawaiian thing Hawaiian yeah. by just throwing a pineapple how, on it. How the hell did you know spam I mean? get so popular? 
Spam, uh, because it was a meat that had a long shelf life. Yeah, stayed yeah. good for 14 years. Yep, yep. Yeah, Did you guys ever eat Spam sandwiches when you were kids? Never. I hated uh, Spam. No, my parents loved me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Bologna and Spam is... Yeah. Spam is actually uh, tastes good, mm. I think. I'm not a fan. No. It's, I like processed meat, though. I'm a, I'm a processed yeah. meat. Well, I like bacon. So Enjoyer. Yeah, but that's it. Mm. What is... What, what part of an animal is Spam? It's the the spam. It. It's the spammy yeah. area. It's just, it's I, just the blob of it. I yeah. think is it like is it like hot dogs and bologna? It's like the yes. It's like yeah, it's all the leftover ground, shit. They ground make. gizzards. It is. Yeah. I think it's just ground leftover whatever they, Ugh, they didn't turn they into. Just, they just like sort of smash it together. You know what's funny? We all get it's gross, and now people are buying collagen protein. Where do you think that's coming from? Yeah. That's from the hooves and the lips and the assholes and the fucking in the in the mm, tendons that of the animal protein. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. <laughs> that's where they get the collagen because that's where all the collagen is. It's all in the connective tissue and all the meat that you're not going to sell. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that colon, you know. That's it. This quaz brought to you by Organify. For those days you fall short on getting your organic veggies or whole food nutrition, Organify fills the gap with laboratory tested certified organic superfoods to help give your health and performance the added edge. Try Organify totally risk free for 60 days by going to Organifi.com. That's O R G A N I F I.com. And use the coupon code MindPump for 20% off at checkout. First question is from Mike Adams 7. Should my squat and deadlift be around the same weight? How come I can deadlift so much more? Oh, this is kind of a cool question. Yeah. This is this is really cool. You know, this is interesting because I um, have the opposite problem. Can you squat more than you can deadlift can. or are they pretty close? No, you can't squat more than you deadlift. I I think so. Bullshit. I think so. You're, well, yours are because clo- of the technique. Yours are close. What's your most? Yeah, what's your close. highest squat and what's your highest? Well, deadlift? if we're going back to like you know Ever. college days, yeah. whatever. We, we yeah, I, yeah. Because the highest I got was squat was it was like four, like almost five hundred. Okay. Like, yeah, but then like deadlifts, I've never mastered it. You know, I've I've gone through the skill of it. and I've only gotten to like you know four twenty five or something like pathetic. He's okay, not. Well, he's not the only not one. Pathetic, he's still. not the only one. Most people can deadlift more than they can squat, but there are people that can squat more than they deadlift, and it has to do with just. I think it has to do with leverage, because what makes you a really good deadlifter makes you typically a bad squatter. You know what I mean? Like long limbs, mm. long arms. You know, longer torso. That some of the strongest deadlifters in the world kind of have that build. Yeah, mine's not even close. I, I, Me neither. I deadlift way more than I can mm-hmm. squat. Yeah, yeah I've pulled six hundred, and I've never squatted more than I think four fifteen. Mm, which is yeah. a pretty big difference, yeah. you know? So I think it has to do with just the the leverage, the way your body's shaped. Um, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. I, I really don't think it's that big of a deal if you're if one is more than the other. I think you're just working with whatever your body, you know, however your body's built. Yeah, but- and I mean, the tech, like, the skill of it, right? So, like, going through, like, so for me, squatting it was started, like, when I was a freshman in high school and, like, took it seriously all the way up until now. You know, like, that was, like, my jam forever. So, you, you know, so then uh, only the last maybe f- – Five six years, like starting deadlifting. Well, I think I think that's what's pro- what's most common. I think is that you do at one point you are introduced to both the movements, right? Whether it be at different times in your life, but at one point you're introduced to both. One of them because of your body type, you you probably have some sort of a mechanical advantage, and because you're better at it. What do most of us do when we're younger or lifting? Is you and we're good at something. Yeah, we're good at something. You gravitate you, towards you it. gravitate towards that, and so. I, I would think it's more like that. It, it kind of reminds me of like I talked on the show before about my flat bench compi- uh, compared to my incline bench. Mm. And for the longest time, my my incline bench was like 50% of what my flat bench was. I mean, it was just, and it was mainly because I just avoided it. Yeah. And it was about a year, uh, I would say at least a year, if not a year and a half, two years of okay, I'm going to dedicate myself to trying to catch my incline up with my flat. And I did, but it took, it took that much focus that, that I was going to put that much practice into doing the incline press as much. And I would think this would be very similar. But those are more, uh, you know, it's a good, it's a good question. They're similar. I, yeah, they're I more similar. It. You know, it's funny because uh, the squat actually, I feel, has more carryover to the deadlift than, than the other way around. Like my deadlift can go up, and my squat won't necessarily go up. But if my squat goes up, mm. I almost always see uh, an increase in my in my deadlift. I don't know if you guys have noticed. Mm. Yeah, I would. Like I that. would agree with that. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. And I would say, you know, if the squat is the king of all exercises, the deadlift is 
close but not quite up there. I would I would say the squat is probably the most functional movement you could possibly do um, just to improve your general strength and power in sports. Uh, that's an interesting theory. I, I could challenge A that. lot of athletes don't deadlift. I could challenge Well, that. that's the other point, man. It just wasn't in the weight room. Like, nobody was deadlifting. It's, I, it, although, I, I was doing a lot of cleaning. That's what you'll do. Which, a lot of the hip hinging movements are yeah. cleans and Olympic type, type lifts. Yeah, so I would, yeah, and you know, nothing more than like, you know, 315 or more than that. You know, it was just like consistent, mm -hmm. uh, you know, power and explosivity. Yeah. Like that's what I was going for. Well, I could argue for the deadlift because I think that just the, the posterior chain in general is neglected so much in people sure. that I could argue and say that that move is more beneficial if you get really, really good at it in, in, in relation to squatting. We always squat, right? Mm. You don't always do a movement like a deadlift like and you don't always activate the posterior chain like you do when you do a deadlift so i i could argue that the deadlift is a superior movement for those reasons that mm -hmm. more people maybe for need, the average person right because the average mm -hmm. person needs that you know but again of course you talk about an athlete an athlete is everything is anterior driven yeah. and so it makes, it makes sense. me kind of want to just focus on deadlift for like a year or something. Your ass would get so big. I would love have, to do that. You have you had moments where I'd seen you where you were and then you'd ask. Yeah, I'd ramp up and then I'd be like, ah, yeah. I go did, back to squat. Did you <laughs> feel the first time you squatted, did it feel much more natural to you than mm -hmm. deadlift? Yeah. Yeah, see, that's what see, you'll get. That's right, what, that's what I meant, right? Yeah. The so that's how I was that way with deadlifting. Deadlifting, yep. would, yeah. the minute I like figured the mechanics down, which was oh, really- your arm length and torso. Yeah, real quick that, for yeah. me, I was pulling, I was watching my strength go right up. Squatting, oh, my, my, my whole journey of squatting has been a fucking nightmare. It took you like 15 years or whatever. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, taken, it's taken me to not that long ago to where I feel like I've got a pretty good mm -hmm. squat. And even, even then, I don't think I have a great squat. I think I have a pretty good squat, I mm -hmm. think, but it's been fucking work yeah. to get uh, to that yeah, point. Yeah, you put it in. I started doing them both right around the same time because I learned both lifts from these power lifter guys that were training uh, in the gym that I went to. And I remember the the... It was quick that I was pulling three plates off the floor, and I was young, and I was maybe 16 years old. It wasn't that sh that short after I was pulling four plates, but it took me forever to be able to squat three plates. It took me a very, very long time, and squatting just wasn't – it just didn't feel as natural, especially as I got real low, and it's still a challenge for me. It's still an exercise. I have to constantly work on my, my mobility and my flexibility and my stability and control. Part of the reasons is I have a very stiff uh, posterior chain, especially my my Achilles and my calves. They're very very tight, tight calves, and in a squat that'll that can be a detriment. That's why I squat so much better with squat shoes. But I feel like in a deadlift, it's almost a positive. That tightness in the in the posterior chain gives me that elastic potential that allows me to pull you know pull the weight up. I got a lot of carryover from deadlifting in uh, jujitsu and in grappling. Uh, or in judo, just because of the pulling movement and the fact that if you're going to lift someone up, and this is before they, when I came, when I was in judo as a kid, this is before they changed the rules. You could do pickups, whereas now they don't allow you to do that anymore. And so that used to be one of my a lot of my my takedowns. I would be able to pick someone up, and as my deadlift strength went up, my ability to to oh, lift someone in the especially air, especially yeah. grip strength. Like I mean, nothing nothing in, improved my grip strength like increasing my deadlift. Mm -hmm. I mean, you having to hold on to and pull that much weight off the ground, and then you go and you got to swing around a little 150-pound mm -hmm. or 190-pound guy. Like, mm -hmm. that's way, way easy in comparison. And you is. just don't get that with squatting. Yeah. Squatting. Yeah, you don't so, get the grip. Those are two exercises that I think people need to just practice more than they use them to work out uh, versus mm -hmm. the other way around. So mm -hmm. what I mean by that is, you know, you go to the gym, and a lot of people have the mentality they want to work out. So I'm going to go do these exercises. I'm going to fatigue my chest. I'm going to fatigue my back. I'm going to fatigue my shoulders. Right. Like that's like in a group. You yeah. Know, like, oh, I'm hitting hamstrings today. So I'm yeah, do deadlifts. Exactly. Right. Squats and deadlifts, you're probably better off. Sometimes it's okay to go in there and think, okay, I'm going to squat because I want to work out my legs or I'm going to deadlift because I want to work out my posterior chain. But I think more often than not, you're better off going in the gym and practicing. Oh, I them. think that's a in, mm -hmm. I think that's an incredible point and something I wish I I pieced together. Oh, early, me too. Earlier on, because, and I, I was sharing this information with with Taylor not that long ago. Just you know, I know we have our programs. I know we have it all structured to have this great workout. But 
sometimes come to the gym and just improve your squat. Like Practice. come in and do all your priming and then, you know, go and lift and see how it improves it then do some more priming and then see how that improves it and then do some more and go light and do kind of tempo and take a video of yourself at the bottom of the squat and analyze like what your your posture at the bottom and you know, I can You'll spend, get way better gains oh, too. Oh yeah, yeah, no. Spend a whole, I can spend a whole hour messing with my deadlift in my squat. So for somebody who's looking to go to the gym to get a great, let's say you want to go to the gym and you want to have a great leg workout and your goal really is aesthetics. Like most people, you just want to change how your legs look. You want to build them, shape them, whatever. So you go to the gym and the first exercise you do, uh, (laughs) because you're smart is squats. Okay. I'm going to the gym. The first exercise I'm going to do for my legs is squats. There's two different mentalities you can go into this workout with. Mentality one is, I'm going to go squat to work my legs out. Mm -hmm. Mentality two is, I'm going to practice the squat like it's a skill that I'm going to learn. Now, it's better to do that, especially if you have other exercises throughout the workout. So, Mm Because after that, you could do lunges, you could do leg extensions or sissy squats. You could do all these other leg exercises that will fatigue the legs. But keep treating the squat like a skill that you're practicing. And what will happen is you'll get really good at squatting. And the side effect of that is much better leg development. And you're right, Adam. I wish I knew that. I wish I could because it's a totally different mentality. I can imagine myself going to the gym thinking work out my legs versus thinking practice this exercise. Get really good at it. And the results will be so much better. Yeah, because you want – it's a total – like it involves everything. And so if you treat it as such and you really like take the time to uh, get the proper connection and get your upper body to, you know, get the tense, the tensile strength that you need uh, to stabilize everything more effectively and your core engaged and like all these other factors, like you're just going to have so much more success. Yeah, because what does that look like either way? Option one, if I'm going there just to work my legs out, then that's really what I'm focused on. So I may increase the weight. I'm going to push the intensity. I'm going to really try and feel my legs. Even if my form isn't ideal or perfect or my or I'm not really operating yeah, you're the chasing the burn of the pump. Like yes, the- versus I'm here to practice. I'm probably going to go lighter. I'm probably going to perfect my form. I'm going to watch my positioning. I'm going to make sure I have stability and control. And the irony of that is when you a perfect squat done at moderate intensity is going to build better muscle than a high intensity squat at subpar with subpar form or technique. That's the truth. It's just one of those exercises. Not all your exercises are like that. But the squat and deadlift are like that. So my advice to people wanting to squat and deadlift because they're such great exercises, practice them more than you work out with them. Next question is from Art of April. Advice for women before they get pregnant to make sure their pregnancy is healthy and their body can bounce back quickly. Oh, you know, I, I, Katrina and I talk about this all the time and, and one of the things that she's like so scared to death of is like, oh, if, you know, if I get pregnant, I don't want to be like this. Like, you're, you're not, first of all, because you care about that. So I think this is the first step is like mm-hmm. yeah. somebody already asking this question. You're probably ahead of a lot of people who just say, fuck it, I don't care. I'm going to get pregnant and eat for two. But the, I think it's the leading up to having the kid is is so important and getting pregnant, right, is getting your having yourself in really good shape mm-hmm. going into the pregnancy is far more beneficial because then you can kind of maintain that. And that's the idea is that you're wherever you're at when you get pregnant, you kind of want to maintain that level of activity. And I think where some people get where they get, you know, kind of screwed is they they're not training, they're not doing Yeah, it's usually that. one or the other like, right. you know, you, you sort of yeah, like the the fuck it, like I'm just going to eat, you know, for two or, you know, or it's like, "Oh, I, I, I better make sure I stay in really good shape and they tend to escalate the workouts uh, or the get in shape. It. Yeah. I've get actually in shape while you get pregnant. Yeah. yeah. That's not the time right. to get in shape. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. It's not like, don't, you don't want to, what you don't want to do is get pregnant and think, Oh, oh I, I better start working out. I better start, uh, you know, cause that, that can lead to some problems. Not to right. say that you shouldn't work <clears throat> out if you're pregnant and you're not working out now, but the attitude of, I need to get in shape and I need to uh, really fight this uphill battle you might push your intensity too high, too hard, um, yeah. well, and you you're might. Not, you're not trying to adapt at that point, right? And you know, Doctor Andy Galpin talks about this, right? The uh, optimizing or adapting. When you by, when you get pregnant, now it's all about optimizing, mm-hmm. right? At this point, now it's about keeping yourself as healthy as possible, staying moving, making healthy choices, feeding feeding yourself well because you're feeding your baby well. But you're not trying to adapt. You're not trying to change your physique or make these gains during your pregnancy. You're trying to maintain and optimize. So, mm-hmm. you know, all the adapting and the stretching yourself and pushing yourself for gains, that should all have happened 
before the pregnancy, and then now we're optimizing. That's how I would say. Uh, yeah, and the best thing you could possibly do, in my opinion, and I've trained quite a few uh, pregnant women uh, before, during, and after pregnancy, is get fit and build as much muscle as you can uh, before you get pregnant. Muscle is a great insurance policy against uh, inactivity. So in the event that you're not able to move as much, you're not as comfortable, maybe you have morning sickness, so you just wake up in the morning and you have to kind of chill out, or maybe the last trimester of your pregnancy, you're so uncomfortable that you really can't move that much. Having that muscle there really helps your body maintain a healthy metabolism. It's also a fantastic insurance against uh, insulin insensitivity issues. Mm. And that can become a, pr a problem for a lot of women. A lot of women, they'll get pregnant and they'll start to develop uh, almost like diabetic type uh, right. situations during pregnancy. Mm -hmm. This is actually much more common. Yeah. Having that muscle helps your body process carbohydrates and sugars and stay sensitive uh, to insulin. The other thing that happens when you get pregnant, sometimes, or actually I should say many times, women develop pain either in their hips mm -hmm. or in their backs. In their backs, because as They're the a baby more hypermobile, because of yeah, what has to change in their body. There are um, hormones in the body that start to ramp up during pregnancy that increase the elasticity of connective tissues. Obviously, your body's preparing uh, for you to push a baby out of your body, so you just become more loose and flexible. And like we've talked about many times on the podcast, you know, lots of flexibility without <laughs> strength uh, contributes to mm -hmm. instability. Mm -hmm. And so people will, you know, women will have uh, issues with their hips sometimes. Back pain. Back pain is a common one because as the baby grows, you lose some of the core stability that you once had because of the-, the Very anterior driven at that point. Too. That's it. You're trying to compensate for it. So yeah, that's all it. these factors play in. That's it. So the best thing you could do is focus on strength and muscle before you get pregnant. Then when you get into the pregnancy- like Adam was saying, maintain. Just kind of keep working out, really listen to your body, you get to the point where you get too fatigued or some exercises don't feel like you can do them anymore. You start to cut them out. Um, the, the exercises that women tend to cut out are the ab exercises for obvious reasons. Yeah. Um, heavy barbell squats start to get cut out towards the end of the pregnancy just because it feels uncomfortable to squat down at the bottom with this you know Basket, pressure pushing up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but really just maintain your fitness the whole time. And what you'll find, I mean, you guys have trained women uh, post-pregnancy who were fit versus women who weren't fit. Right. How fast of a difference? difference? Night and day. It's great. Well, we have, you know, Grace is a great example of that, you know, who we just had fly out here and is a, a mind pump listener. Shout out to her. I mean, it's been so awesome to watch her have because I think she's had two kids during the time she's been mind, mind yeah. pump. I know yeah. for sure one, if not, was coming off. Oh, the it's other like one. two or three yeah, months two, later, yeah. she looked amazing. Yeah, like ripped abs right mm -hmm. after, and that uh, that's a testament to all the work that she has put in before, you know, mm -hmm. and 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 making herself in in really good condition so then she could maintain. That. I mean, I remember seeing videos of her. You know, I know you mentioned not really heavy barbell squatting, but man, she was barbell squatting all the way up until I think the the mm -hmm. final week of, of popping yeah. out the kids. So. And that's the other thing too is fitness or or resistance training, I should say, in particular. Just because you can work different parts of your body, you can work different movements. It's it, very adaptable. It puts you in your body, so you really know your body. I mean, if you talk to someone who's lifted weights for a couple of years. They can, they're very connected to the muscles of their body, to the mid-back, to the posterior chain. They can activate muscles. They can feel muscles. They know how to <coughs> manipulate their body differently. They just have better body awareness and control. And that's a very important thing when your body is dramatically changing over a nine-month period. Not only that, I know we're speaking to the aesthetic part of all this and, and wanting to stay in good shape and the way we look, but something that not a lot of people talk about that I used to talk to my, my clients about is, you know, there's a lot of internal muscles that are responsible for you being able to squeeze this kid out and a lot of a lot of women that don't have good control or muscle connect uh, mind muscle connection like you were talking about and then you add in the fact that they have to take this epidural they they are so numb that they can't activate those muscles to help push the baby through that's a whole nother recovery that's process. a whole nother thing dude have right. you, have and, you watched? And, they ha and they have a they have a really hard they have a hard pregnancy because one, they're numb as fuck. Two, they have a terrible mind muscle connection. Well, and they're bedridden. They're yeah. laying on their back. Yeah. yeah. But you take somebody who really has that ability to activate those muscles, has a good mind muscle connection, and then they go into strong, a fit. Yeah. It mm -hmm. makes the whole process. Have you watched the the documentary The Business of Being Born? Did 
you guys watch that? I yet? do want to watch it. I haven't seen that yet, bro. You guys but have to watch it. It was so I'm absolutely sure, yeah, eye opening. Yeah, exactly. And I'm sure a lot of that I've seen a lot of that going through that process with my wife. So eye opening. It's yeah. such a great documentary. But you talk about the epidural. I mean, a lot of that process could be once you educate yourself, of course. Um, but then as you go into it, fit. You're right. The likelihood that you're able to have a natural birth and less compli- complications. That is. It's so much better when you go into it fit than when you go into it not fit. We we were stoked because uh, one of Courtney's friends was a doula, and so she just volunteered, you know, herself, you know, through the process of it, which was just great for me as like somebody else that was looking out for that whole process. Because you do have to advocate if you're going in there and you don't want certain, uh, you know, drugs, procedures, mm-hmm. whatever to, to occur. What's a, what's I know what a midwife is. What's in a doula? A yeah, doula, so like a go go dancer? No. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yeah, she's in there. Hey, Dude, doula, doula. That would fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fly. What is that? That what would fly. What's the no, difference? it's just like it's like a consultant. It's like somebody that's it's like, your advocate. Yeah, isn't they, that they a come, midwife? No, no. A midwife actually delivers your baby. Yeah, she's, they, they, yeah. They didn't actually deliver. They just they've been through the process of Jesus. it quite a bit. So they, dude, it's 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 quite the ordeal, bro. Man. You go just in, wait. You go into the hospital. Your, your your wife's about to have her baby. Like they will as much reading as you're gonna read, you're not gonna know what the fuck's going yeah, on. Yeah, like they'll be like, we want to. Uh, oh, oh, we need to give her pitocin, and then oh no, yeah. oh now it's hurting. We give you know epidural. Right. Oh, now we got a C-section. You uh, have someone there who's yeah, like the baby turned now, like the the umbilical cords wrapped around the neck, and here's what we need to do. Yeah, and, and the doula is just your advocate. This all like, happened. They know like, oh what my your god. Yeah, they know what your plan is. They know what you don't want to do. What you yeah, do want to do. Let's try this position. Like Jesus. she's really good about helping mm-hmm. to kind pass of out like a little progress girl. it like that. Are you really? Yeah, I would totally. You're not gonna watch. No, you're gonna watch. You're gonna cut the cord. Facetime. Me, <laughs> I said I would never cut the cord. It, it just happens, dude. Next question is from Cody Phillips, seventeen ninety one. I'm a twenty four year old athlete and have had multiple injuries of my adductor, Achilles, and soleus. Oh man! I am also very flexible. Do you have any recommendation how someone can become less flexible? Do you think that could help injury prevention? This it's not that you necessarily want to become less flexible. It's that you want to have more control, more strength in the wide range of motion that you possess. Right. We were actually talking uh, to um, Paul, Paul. Paul about yeah. this on our recent episode, and he said, you know, stopping reps in shorter ranges of motion, maintaining control, and then you know doing just controlled strength training. So what you want to do is when you're lifting weights. Rather than first off, lifting weights, mm-hmm. lift weights. If you're not lifting weights, definitely do it. Um, and when you are lifting weights, don't go to the end ranges of motion. Go just above that. Pause. Hold the weight. Get good tension. Yeah. Come up. Squeeze. What you want to do is you want to connect. You want to connect and get strong throughout the whole range of motion that you that you have. Yeah, slow down. I mean, the, the biggest thing is to slow down and really feel your way through each rep and 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 to <laughs> to know where you know that that sort of drops in, in terms of like your, your muscle tension, like where you sort of lose that connection because like you can, if you're hypermobile and you can reach these crazy ranges of motion, um, you know, where, where do those deficiencies lie? Where are you strongest in that, uh, strength curve? And so you just have to kind of work your way through incrementally, like the, the angles yeah. of that. It's rep. not super common, but I've had clients like this. Well, the, and it's typically women, um, that'll, that'll come see me and I'll start training them and I'll do my assessment and they're, they don't lift weights, so they are they don't have a lot of strength. And then I'll watch them get into the positions. And I'll be like, whoa, you're hyper flexible, no strength. It's, yeah. like a, it's like a wet noodle. And so what I would do with these clients, I'll give you an example. I had one client who uh, you know, I was having her do a stiff-legged deadlift to try and tighten up and strengthen her hamstrings. But the problem with the stiff-legged deadlift, how you normally teach it is you tell someone to go all the way down until they feel a stretch in their hamstrings. Well, for her, that didn't exist. She would go all the way down. She'd fold herself in half. Yeah. So I would have her stop before that point. I'd have her go all, go down, and I'd have her stop pretty short from where she could go all the way down, hold that position, stay tight. So I'd do like a count of three, and then I'd have her come out of it. And then we'd do it again, go yeah. all the way down to the point where I think, okay, that's where we should stop, hold it, and come back up. And over time, she actually became – because she used to have hip pain and knee pain – and over time, that started to reduce. Yeah, sim- similar thing. I trained this girl who was like a gymnast and would could you know like every range of motion you could think of could get into, but at the same time would get into those positions super fast. 
it, because like it was accessible like oh yeah cool and then just would, like reach down really quickly for that but you know getting them to really slowly get um control in each part of that movement mm-hmm. was was quite a challenge because it was mm-hmm. you know it's, it's it goes against kind of like how you operated forever that's right it, it it's Injuries tend to happen in ranges of moat, and I say tend because you could, of course, hurt yourself almost anyway, but injuries tend to happen in the ranges of motion that you just don't have a lot of control over. And these are the injuries, especially these are the injuries where you're like, God, I really didn't really do much. I just changed directions, or I went to bend over and twist, and the next thing you know, I popped a disc, or I, I, I hurt myself, or I tore something. And really what it was is you just got into a range of motion you just didn't own. Yeah. And when you don't own it... Uh, it was unfamiliar. Yeah, shit, shit tends to go wrong. Heavy strength training is the absolute best thing this person can do. And I'll take it even a step further. As you get more and more comfortable with lifting weights and you're doing what I was said earlier, this these person's a great candidate for controlled heavy low rep training mm-hmm. where you're training in the very low rep ranges, three, four, five reps... Um, you know, of course, when you get to the point where you can control the way yeah, grinding type lifts, I would, I would challenge the, the heavy lifting as the best thing I, I would actually, this is where I think Ken stretch is incredible. And I think that the That'd be only a good place to start. Yeah. I think the problem with like something like Ken stretch with like a 24 year old is it's hard to get you to settle down, to do something like that and put the work in because it seems you know, mundane. You're just sitting there on the floor and you're driving. It takes a lot of mental effort too to really understand the concept. Right. But if you really want to own that position or that full range of motion that, that we're talking about, that would be the ideal situation in my opinion is to really get good at kin stretch or like a MAPS Prime Pro program and really take your t- take yourself through all these movements and really get good at them, especially when you have areas where you've had injuries. When we talk about the soleus and Achilles and getting into the ankle mobility and doing things like the combat stretch and really activating all those muscles in those deep stretched positions. So I think doing that, and and then if you could do that in conjunction with what Sal is saying, I think that's the winning formula, but it takes that work and effort. I mean, at the end of the day, like that, uh, people want like a quick answer. There's not like, like, Hey dude, just add a bunch more load and, and go lift heavy or go do that. Like, well, you know, you could also injure yourself that way too if you don't own that own that full range of motion. So tools like Ken Stretch, I think, are incredible. <laughs> um, or like we tried to make simplify, you know, a tools like that with Maps Prime Pro. I think using that in conjunction with like a strength training program would be the ideal situation. Yeah, and I can tell you what not to do. Definitely don't do any static stretching. Definitely stay away from. Yeah you know, uh, exercise practices where you're trying to increase your range of motion. That's the worst thing you could do uh, for someone like this. Like I would avoid all stretching all except for like what Adam was saying with kin stretch, which is really more just connecting to your range of motion. But don't challenge your stretches. Don't challenge your range of motion. Don't aim for getting more ranges of motion. Allow your central nervous system to tighten you up a little bit by avoiding those things. So that's what ends up happening. Like when you stop stretching and you find, oh, I've lost some flexibility – Really, it's your central nervous system just tightening up the reins a little bit. Yeah. So I would avoid stretching at all costs. You know, like isometrics and mm-hmm. things like that. Just really focus on uh, you know certain movements and certain positions to really like get that muscle to tense up. Like that's that's a whole process in itself. Next question is from Hit Burn Rachel. Thoughts on Olympic weightlifting for composition? Can you achieve great aesthetics training this way, or would a bodybuilding style program be best? Terrible idea. Yeah, you can't compete. You cannot compare any other form of resistance training for aesthetics to bodybuilding, which was specifically designed to improve aesthetics. That being said, if you don't lift weights and all of a sudden you start doing Olympic weightlifting and you do it the right way, by the way, with a coach and you learn how to do it right and you practice, where are you going to change your aesthetics for the more for the positive? Of course, you're lifting weights now and you're doing some pretty damn functional uh, exercises, but you're not really sculpting the body with any type of this focus. Is, this is another thing that makes me not like CrossFit yeah. is that, the, and this is the the newest thing that they're doing now is they're, they're trying to make it, they're trying to highlight these incredible looking bodies because that sex is what sales and sells. And, you know, aesthetics is what people want. And most people that are getting into any sort of exercise modality for the majority, they want to look mm-hmm. better and so, you know, we're starting to pitch, 
CrossFit as this great way to get in shape. And I just, I fucking hate it. It just mm. is, it's a, it's using a fucking screwdriver to hammer a nail. Can mm. it be done? Sure, it can be done. I mean, it, it's just not a smart way to do it. There's a much better, much better approach if you're trying to build an aesthetic physique. If you were trying to sculpt your body doing Olympic lifts, that's not how you do that. No. I mean, it has a it has a place for it, and it's and I'm not knocking Olympic lifts. I think there's a, there's lots of carryover and benefit to it for overall strength and health and whatever, but definitely not the best way. Well, that's to, the last place I would go. Yeah, you know, to to look for changing my aesthetics is, is to do something on that high of a skill level where you can get you know reach and attain aesthetics with such a a more a foundational approach where we're using like you know just hypertrophy training and certain techniques that are like way the risk versus reward you're definitely going to benefit a lot more from you well, know, it's doing like a, other it's like a chisel versus a chainsaw and then yeah. you're a sculptor and you got a big block of wood it's like you know olympic lifts is fucking the chainsaw you'll chuck you'll take some pieces out of that real fast doing getting good at movement nobody like that's that, competing in, in, the, in, in olympic lifts gives a shit about like what their body looks like i mean maybe they do like after like as a result of what they've been doing but like the focus is completely on how can they better improve mechanics you know every little pro, you know step in that process to to get the the weight up yeah but you know bodybuilding is body part focused so if you look in the mirror and say oh i want more shoulders i need more hamstrings i need more quads you change your training accordingly and it's really focused on sculpting and changing the way that you look now that's not to say there isn't some stuff you can't learn from a, a sport like olympic lifting which is all focused on movement because i think bodybuilders could benefit from practicing and training just movements and not body parts but bodybuilding specifically designed to change your aesthetics one of the biggest uh drawbacks to olympic weightlifting in the context of aesthetics is their lack of the eccentric portion of mm -hmm. repetitions. Right. Now, so for the for listeners who have no idea what I'm talking about, when you when I'm curl let's look at a curl, like a basic dumbbell curl or barbell curl. When I curl the weight up, that's a, called a concentric contraction of my muscle, my muscle shortening. When I hold the weight and don't move at all, that's an isometric contraction. And when I lower the weight, that's eccentric. Now, all three of those reps contribute to strength and changing the muscle and that stuff, but yeah. the eccentric portion is the most responsible for muscle hypertrophy or growth. And that's or what change. Olympic lifting, powerlifting, we eliminate that. Yeah. Well, no, powerlifters use well, a lot of, use, yeah. uh, uh, of the eccentric, but not Olympic lifters because yeah. with an Olympic it's lift, speed. you're throwing it up and then you're dropping the weight. The only movement where you see some eccentric with Olympic weightlifters is they do a lot of squatting. Now, even the way they squat- like They're dropping the hole fast. Yeah, they're even still not yeah. emphasizing the, the eccentric. That being said, if you look at a pure Olympic lifter, many times the body part on them that's developed more than the rest of their body is their legs. Yeah, they're Many quads. times. Yeah, they're They've got massive glutes. legs, and that's because they that's really the only part of their body that they do consistent eccentric type uh, loading because they're they're going down and coming up. Everything else is off the floor, up in the air, mm -hmm. and then drop, and then up, 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 and then drop. So what do they get from that? A lot of power, incredible speed power. They get crazy functional type strength, especially and, for their sport. And again, there's ways to achieve like that explosive fast twitch type response without all the risk. So without you throwing it over your head, and you can do like... Uh, a lot of those explosive type movements in a more controlled uh, type of a, a movement. So um, I would highly, and that's why we, we worked through all of that, even when we were creating maps performance, because it's like, you know, your average person, like what can they do to get that sort of stimulus, but do it in a way where like we can eliminate a lot of the technical, uh, you know, the advanced sort of skill that that, that is required for you to kind of get, uh, you know, the bar to go through that path and yeah. land and, you know, all the specifics involved. With yeah. That. I, it's, it's gotta be the worst. Like if somebody, if someone off the street, just the average person is like, Hey, I want to start using weights to improve the way I look. Yeah. What's the worst form of weights to do just that? I would say Olympic weightlifting. It's not because Olympic weightlifting doesn't give you a good workout, but I think Justin, you were alluding to this or talking about this. The skill required to do Olympic weightlifting to the to get to the point where you can do it as a workout, you're going to be practicing Olympic lifting for I don't know a year, two years yeah. before you even get close to right. getting a workout. I mean, it takes me sometimes that long just to get someone to do a regular squat and deadlift, yeah. let alone a, a a clean or a snatch or any other 
traditional lift, which requires so, so much skill. Re- yeah, replace that with like a high pull, like something like that. We, we've added things like that where it's just, you know, it's a little bit more focused just on the speed of the lift, you know, and that concentric explosive uh, movement, but, you know, it, it requires a little bit less. It's one of the reasons why I think kettlebell kettlebells were able to get as popular as they did. Yep. And kettlebells offer a lot, okay? There's a lot of things you do with kettlebells that are pretty awesome, but one of the reasons why I think kettlebells exploded onto the scene was it was a much easier way to teach someone to have an explosive type of a, a hip hinging mm-hmm. type of a lift. And like, the loading is more centric, and so it's more control. Yeah. And there's just a lot less risk for you. Like how much easier is it to teach a, a kettlebell swing than it is to teach a clean? You know what I mean? How much less mobility and less control do you need to oh. be able to do? Oh, yeah. Way, way, way more simplified. Yeah. So then you give them the benefits of that, of that kind of training without having to... to Okay, Mrs. Johnson. You know, I know it's been a year, but we're still practicing the, the the mechanics of a clean to get you to be able. I wouldn't even. I actually, how many clients have you ever had do Olympic lifting? Only like two, and yeah. they were athletes. Yeah, so. I, I've had none. Yeah. I've had no clients that I've actually done like full on Olympic weightlifting for because it's just that it's that technical. And you know, Adam brought up CrossFit. I I do think it's absolutely ridiculous that they that you put Olympic lifting in anything that is a fatigue based type circuit. It just makes. No sense whatsoever. It's a it's a recipe for for injury and disaster. Bad idea. Absolutely. And with that, look, if you go to mapswhite.com, you can check out our redone, brand new, looking cool Maps Anywhere program. Now, Maps Anywhere is our program that we designed for people to be able to do literally anywhere. No exercise equipment required, uh, except for maybe resistance bands. You could do it at home. You could do it in a hotel room. You could do it on the road. Um, it's good for, for people who are beginner, intermediate, and advanced. We put tools in there that you can use to scale the intensity of the workout up to give yourself a fantastic and effective workout. It's also 50% off this month, so half off the regular price. Again, go to mapswhite.com. Make sure you use the coupon code WHITE50. That's W H I T E. And the number 50, no space, at checkout for the discount. Thank you for listening to Mind Pump. If your goal is to build and shape your body, dramatically improve your health and energy, and maximize your overall performance, check out our discounted RGB Super Bundle at mindpumpmedia.com. The RGB Super Bundle includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. Nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.